OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network All right, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your summer to join me and continue learning about Google Forms today. So as Melinda said, you know, this is part one of three, and today we will be focusing on the form, specifically uh, quizzes. So as you know, I am an ESL instructor, and I am fortunate enough to be at Torrance Adult School with amazing colleagues and students. I am a level one certified educator, and I'd be willing to talk to you a little bit more about what that means for you and for your digital skills. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. So today, today you are going to be able to create a quiz form, and you're going to be using Google Forms, and we're going to apply the following formatting features you are going to learn to customize the theme of your form, how to um, use different question types on a Google form. You're going to add media to your questions, so pictures and video. And you are going to learn how to set a required question or make a question um, not required for your users. Um, as you type in questions into the chat box, I will do my best to address them now, or um, I will tell you that the answer is coming up later. All right, so first off, uh, Google Forms offers us a variety of templates that might already be in your organization. Uh, so for today, you know, we're going to be working on the template for a blank quiz. Um, these other templates like Find a Time, I find that they are incredibly useful. Um, I also like the exit ticket. And so today we are going to be focusing on blank quiz. And let's see what it is. So maybe some of you are asking yourselves, well, what's the difference between a quiz and an exit ticket or a survey? Well, on Google Forms, the difference between a quiz and the other types of Google Forms is that A, you can assign points to the questions that you ask in your form, and second, you can add an answer key to most, uh, to most of the question types that Google Forms allows. So that is the main difference between a quiz and any other type of Google Form. All right, so why do you need Google Forms in your class, yes? So I'm here to tell you, well, why not, all right? This is what a Google Forms quiz um, form can do for you in the classroom, okay? Now, you can use, you can use a form, uh, you can generate a form to use at any stage of your lesson, right? And um, it, Google Forms allows us to ask me many different types of questions and include media, which is something that I really like. Um, you can include an answer key or not. You know, if you include an answer key, uh, you can instantly grade student work. And that is a beautiful thing uh, because you don't have to go back and review one by one. So it's definitely a time saver. Um, again, you can assign points to each question and this can change after afterwards you know you don't just because you assign an answer key or uh, points to a question doesn't mean that you can't change it later um, and later i mean after students or after users have submitted something um, again you can add personal feedback to each student uh, you google will automatically send them their score once you review it um, it generates all their all the responses in a beautiful, nicely organized spreadsheet for you to analyze. Um, and of course, um, my favorite, one of my favorite things is that it allows for your students or your users submissions to be in the form of text. So I can type directly into the form or it also allows for users to include attachments and you know, it's a 
diverse uh, types of files. So it's not only a Google Doc or a, or a Microsoft Word document. And it saves all of these responses and all of the attachments that you receive in one convenient location for you. All right, moving on. So at this point, you are going to be taking a little quiz. All right, so in the chat box, you will see a link to, there you go. All right, you will see a link to a quiz. Now this is just for fun, okay? And I created this quiz for you to see uh, examples of different question types that Google Forms will allow you. Now, I created this quiz for you and I set it so that you could see your score after you submit, after you submit your, your response. So please, um, you can see the answer key and some feedback for some of the questions after you submit your response. So I'll give you, I'll give you a few minutes. I'll give you a few minutes to work on that. I am going to, to come back to our, to our form. Um, all right, Elena Toscano, I'm glad that you enjoyed that. Uh, there seems to be some, uh, maybe I did make a mistake in the awkward. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I double checked. So unless I, I ran into an error with this form, I accidentally deleted the answer key and I had to uh, put in the answer key at the very last minute once again. So yes, maybe I did make a mistake here and there. Um, and I hope maybe, you know, you did learn something from this. So my name is Monica, once again, M-O-N-I-C-A. Okay, yeah. So I hope that, you know, for uh, Thomas Binning Binninger, um, you, you can access, once you view your score and you look at the feedback, you will see a link to a YouTube video for, um, for for this for the song lyrics okay so that's i want to just show you an example of how you can add feedback to your questions you know so when your students or when your audience views their results they have something to fall back on it's not like oh i got the wrong answer and that's it you know that's okay olivia marroquin you got my name wrong i hope you don't forget it and don't worry i hope to see you in part two and part three and you will know my name by then, I promise. Okay, so I tried to, I tried to create um, sample questions for you so that you could see all the different question types. Now, there are some question types that are missing and they are missing because, because for those question types, you cannot add an answer key. And I'm gonna go into into that a little more later on okay so if you're confused about that just give me just give me a moment please okay um in this question where you know about the mask question so i wanted to show you that that you have the option to include links to outside sources of your form you know uh, where students could look read or watch something and you can ask a question about it now it does, it will require maybe a little more time because for you know, the internet might be running a little slow. Um, so I know that some of you have that problem today. All right, I tried to find a very short video and informative. I hope you enjoyed this little TED Ed video. Uh, so this is an example of how you can insert videos and ask questions about, um, about your video. Um, all right. I added this question in here about how comfortable you are using Google Forms. This was just a, a little um, extra question there. If you notice, there was not an answer key to this question because uh, for this specific type of question, you cannot add an answer key. Uh, I'm sorry, you can add an answer key, but because the answer is in range form, it's a little, it's a little tricky to come up with a question um, that falls exactly within a range. Uh, okay, got it. So, all right, moving on. Back to, back to my little presentation. Okay, so I want to show you how I use Google Forms in my class, okay? Now, I used it in three different ways. 
as a pre, as a mid and a post assessment um, and for homework, right? And so one of the ways that I used it was like you did today, right? Where you, the students typed in their answers into the form. They selected a multiple choice response. And also I used it where students, um, as a place where students uploaded their work. Now, for me, in my case, I was not using a learning management system, an LMS like Google Classroom or Moodle. Um, it was my choice to, to do something else. Now, but I needed a place where students could just turn in their work for me and I wouldn't have to be receiving a thousand, I'm sorry, thousands of emails from students sending me their work. So Google Forms provided this amazing, amazing platform for me where I could have students upload their work in the, um, as a PDF, as an audio recording, as a video file, as a Google Doc, as a Microsoft Word document. Uh, so students uploaded their work. Right, so even though it's not necessarily a, a quiz, quiz like you just took, um, it, was a, it was a place where students were able to upload their work that they did at home and then they submitted um, through a Google form. I then received their work, um, evaluated their work, assigned the students points and sent them back um, sent them feedback. And I also used uh, survey. I also used it as surveys. So now um, I'd like for you to uh, take a moment and I think now is, uh, is a good time to share the, the link for them to see examples of some Google Forms that I, that I used, that I used um, in my classroom. So I'll give you a few moments to look through them, to look through them and to ask me any questions that you have about these Google Forms. One thing that I want you to, to notice is that some of the forms have sections and a form like what you did right before this did not have sections. Now, some people are, are, are of the school where they say, oh my goodness, we need sections in a form. It's just way too long if you don't have sections. And I agree. I completely agree. However, in my, uh, in my classroom, especially with the lower levels, I found that what students were doing was they saw the questions on the Google form and they preferred to do their work in their notebook and then type the questions. So a student asked me if I could make it easier for them and for him specifically. And so I figured making, e making it easier for him would most likely make it easier for others. Uh, so I decided to do away with the sections. All right, so instead you see a very long, long Google form uh, where students were able to view all of the questions at the same time, work in their notebook if they wanted, and then they typed in their answers. All right, so, you know, I have been using Google Forms in my classroom much um, before COVID and we had to trans, you know, go into distance learning. So I'm very, very glad that I did because most of my students were already familiar with how to use a Google Form. Now, let me talk to you about some of the advantages to using Google Forms in your classroom. And one of them for me was that the submissions uh, were in one folder, nicely organized for me, and that meant quicker access to these files. I didn't have to go around my Google Drive or through my email or anywhere else sifting for student responses. Um, another thing is that an answer key is optional. So, you know, if there is a question, like an open-ended question, um, you can assign points to it, but you don't have to have an answer key. You would just manually go back and read that specific response. Uh, uh, again, points could be assigned later, 
and can be changed later after a student submits their work. Um, if I, you know, right now everybody submitted a, a quiz and I could go back and offer you feedback as a whole, you know, if I see that students are making mistakes on a particular type of question, or I can give each uh, participant individual feedback as well, you know, something like, oh, great job, or something more intense, something, I'm sorry, a little um, lengthier, which is watch this video on the present symbol, for example. Um, <clears throat> today, you completed this uh, quiz synchronously, right? And a form could be used like what we did today, or um, you could assign it for students to, su to submit outside of the virtual um, session. Now, uh, the first couple of times, I think it would be, it was useful when I, just like I'm sharing now, you know, I shared the Google form on my screen and I walk them through what they should do with this form. Uh, I really like the range of questions, you know, it offers us a flexibility into what we want to ask and really uh, focus on the best questioning strategies for our students. Um, super easy that it was really easy for me to duplicate forms where students for example they had to submit a journal every week and i just duplicated the form changed the title changed the date and it was super quick and easy so i i'm very glad that forms could just be duplicated tweaked and used all over again now, obviously, there were challenges, obviously. We've, we've already experienced some of the challenges today, right? Um, so again, my students, uh, some lacked digital skills, so it was not intuitive to all students, and we had to go back and forth with a couple of them, uh, showing them how to, how to use a Google Form. Now, um, you cannot revert to a previous version, unfortunately. You know, the other Google Apps will allow you to restore to a previous version, but unfortunately, a Google Form will not, okay? However, you can undo some, act, you know, you can undo actions when you are, when you are, I'm sorry, when you have the Google Form open at that specific moment. Uh, if you're working with a collaborator uh, and you're both working on the form at the same time, it, could, it gets a little confusing because uh, it's not as quickly, it doesn't, quick, it doesn't update as quickly as when you're working on a Google Doc, for example. So just a heads up, that can get a little confusing. Um, another inconvenience that I found was that uh, if a student or if a user types their email incorrectly, then, then you cannot then the student will not receive their score. You know, what I did to sidetrack, to, I'm sorry, to bypass that was I just took a screenshot of their score and I emailed it to them. So there was always a reminder, please type in your email correctly. And uh, regarding the question type where Google Forms allows you to upload a file, um, we should know that some file types are not accepted. The most common PDFs, um, Excel, uh, Excel spreadsheets, um, Google Docs, Microsoft Word documents, P, uh, MP3s, MP4s, those are accepted, but not all of them are. And that is something that I found out um, in my experience. Uh, so let me go on. All right. So let's get into the forms menu, okay? So now I've opened, I've opened up a blank quiz and what I want to do first is I want to break it down for you. I want to break down the view for you before we, uh, before we get into the practical element of this webinar. Um, so what you see here at the top of a blank, of a blank quiz, all right? What you see at the top is you see a space where where right now it says blank quiz, and what you would do is you would type in the title of your form there, all right? Now, if you see a little folder icon, 
you can click that folder icon and you will it will allow you to select where in your Google Drive you would like to save that form. Um, starring, clicking on the star, it makes it like a favorite, you know, in your bookmarks on your web browser, you have favorites. On Google Drive, you have starred items, starred files, starred folders, right? And they just allow you quicker, quicker access, okay? Um, all changes saved in Drive is just a reminder, you know, that after every single little change that you make into your, uh, into your Google form, the changes will automatically be saved. All right. Um, on the other side, just still, I'm still at the forms menu at the top. You see these little icons, right? And let me start. Let me start with add-ons. So that little puzzle, puzzle piece that you might see throughout other Google apps is referring to add-ons. Now, add-ons are something that you have to go into the Google Suite and you have to find and install this add-on. Now, add-ons are just mini programs that run on the application like Google Forms, Microsoft Word, I'm sorry, Microsoft, Google Docs, sorry, sorry. And they just increase the functionality of your app, okay? Now, you do not have to have these, um, but there are add-ons for, um, you know, generating tables or adding a timer there's all sorts of, of add-ons for Google Apps. It's just a matter of you combing through the Google Suite and finding what is right for you. Now, this little paint palette will customize the color, the theme, and the font of your form, okay? Um, the little eye will open up a new tab, and that is where you can preview what your users will see when you send them your form little um, wheel uh, will allow you to modify the settings for the form and I'm going to go more in depth in the next slide regarding your settings. Um, the send button will will show you the options for sending the form to those um, that you want to share it with. Okay, moving on. Okay, got it. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's talk about your settings, okay? And Anthony or Melinda, stop me if, if I need to address something. Um, so in your settings, when you open your general, sorry, when you open your settings in that little wheel, you have three different tabs. So I'm gonna talk about the general settings and checking this box where it says collect email addresses uh, can limit your users, okay? Because it's going to require participants to sign into Gmail now, maybe some of your students or maybe some of people in your audience uh, do not have a Gmail address um, and therefore they would not be able to access your form. So keep that in mind, please. And for today's, for the quiz that you took today, I made sure that I did not check that box or any of the other boxes that would require a user to sign in. Um, if you are within an organization like myself, Torrance um, Unified, then you may need to make sure that you uncheck that box or else, once again, people outside of your organization will not be able to access your form. Um, and in the third area, you choose. What do you want your audience to see? Do you want them to edit, be able to edit their response? Do you want them to see a summary of the responses of other people who have completed the form? So that is up to you. Um, still on settings, still on settings, let's talk about the quiz settings. Now, at the beginning, I told you that a Google Forms quiz is different than other forms because you can, al you can allow, um, sorry, you can add an answer key and you can add points. Uh, so pretty much, any form that you open, any template that you open, can be turned into a, into a quiz by selecting, selecting this option, okay? So you don't necessarily have to open a blank quiz. When you open a blank quiz, you simply already have this checked for you, okay? But you can do this to any form. Um, 
so what I did today, right, what I did for your quiz today is I checked the first option, which was immediately after each submission. And you were all able, you know, if you submitted your, this quiz, you were able to see your, your answers and you were able to, to see the answer key. Um, so that is, that is what immediately will do. It will require an answer key. You want to take the time, review everybody's response one by one, then you would select the latter later after manual review. And of course, once again, what do you want your audience to be able to see after they submit their quiz? Yeah, so today you are able to see your missed questions, the correct answers, and the point values. All right, and that is, that is up to you. Okay, got it. Now, just like just like here, right, where if you select collect email addresses, that will automatically um, ask your users to sign into Gmail. There are a couple of other options in your settings that will also require, I'm sorry, in your settings and in your questions that will require uh, users to sign into Gmail. So it's important to keep that in mind because making some of these selections might limit your audience and you just have to keep that in mind okay so other settings and questions that will require um, your users to sign in are um, the option of allowing people to respond one time um, asking for email addresses like I already mentioned um, allowing them to edit their response or sending a response email and asking people to upload files it will ask them to sign in so that they can act, they can have the ability to upload work from Google Drive. More on that later, okay? Um, and of course, um, if you restrict the form to users in your organization, they will have to be signed in with the email address from that organization. All right, am I doing <clears throat> am I doing okay? Should I stop for questions? <clears throat> I think we're okay, Monica. All right, awesome, awesome, awesome. I don't wanna lose anybody. The fun is just about to begin, okay? Um, all right, so now I have, I've opened my Google form. I have tweaked some of the settings in my Google form, and now I'm ready to get down and dirty and create some questions, okay? So <clears throat> this is a snapshot of what your question field will look like, okay? Um, I have added some numbers here for reference, okay? And, you know, number one, this is where you're going to type your question, your question field, okay? I'm going to refer to this as a question field in the future, in, I'm sorry, in the next activity. This is your question field where you will type in a description or you will type in instructions or type in an actual question, okay? Now, Number two, this little, these little six dots will allow you to click and drag this, this question uh, to a different order in the form, okay? Now, now number three is, um, I want you to look at the image in number three and the image in number five. Now, both of these are to add pictures, okay? But, uh, Number three will allow you to add the picture within this question, okay? Within this question. If you click on number five, if you click on number five to add a picture, to add an image, your image will be added um, without a question field, okay? So you can try that later on when we get into the hands-on part of it. Um, in number four, you are going to open this drop down menu to select the question type. There are about 10 question types, I believe. Uh, so it is up to you which one you want for what purpose you want it. Um, number five, you will, uh, this little toolbar on the right, uh, you have different options. We are going to be working um, with this little plus sign which gives you the opportunity to add a question, okay? Add a question, 
add images, video, add section, add a title or description. And that little arrow is for those of you who already have Google Forms created. And maybe, you know, maybe you don't want to create this Google Form entirely from scratch. There are three or four other questions from a different form that you made previously, and you want to add them. So rather than typing them all over again, you can click on this, on this uh, little sheet with an arrow and it will be, it will give you the option to import questions from your previous Google Forms. All right. Number six, <clears throat> number, the area number six is where your, where your responses will be typed um, or where the responses will be logged. If it's a checkbox, a multiple choice, whatever question type you, you decide on. Number seven is to add an answer key or points. Again, you don't have to, you don't have to add them. It's optional, right? But once again, it depends on your purpose. Do you want to, uh, today I added an answer key and I added points because I wanted to see your score immediately after you submitted this quiz. Um, number eight, duplicates the question, right? It duplicates um, the question type. Um, any media that you add to your question. So all of those settings, answer key points, it will also duplicate, all right? Um, and number, si number nine, sorry, will be the area will, where you um, designate the question as required or not required. All right, I hope that you are, you are ready because now it is, it is going to be your turn. Um, but let me walk you through, let me walk you through a couple of examples, okay? Now, at this point, I am going to split my screen so that it can make it easier for you to view. Uh, just and me... Monica, could yeah. we stop before we start to practice just for a few questions that have been kind of repeated? Most definitely. Okay. Um, when you collect email addresses, that means that the user has to have a Gmail. Question? Correct. Okay. Yes. If you do not have that selected, do the people that are filling out the form need to have a Gmail? So if you don't collect email addresses, do they still have to have an email in order to fill out the form? No, they do not. Okay. However, it is important to keep in mind, uh, to keep in mind that simply by selecting that, by selecting that, that is not um, let me put that up on my screen one more time. If you collect email addresses, um, that's not the only way that email addresses will be collected. You know, there are, just like I, just like I said, there are other settings um, that will require your users to sign in. So if you do not want your users to sign in like you didn't have to today, um, you have to make sure that none of these none of these settings are selected and that you're not asking these types of questions okay um, maybe some of you today have gmail or don't have gmail but nobody was asked to sign in right nobody was asked to sign in so just keep that in mind i hope that answers your question next question um it, it's kind of two parts so when someone's filling out the form can they come back to it later and finish it? Or do they have to do it all in one setting? So that is a great question. Now, if their browser times out or if they clean out their cache or cookies, then they will have to open the form up again, you know, and start all over. Now, if they just kind of leave their, their browser open, you know, like I have it on my phone or on my computer and I step away for a few minutes, uh, then it will most likely still be there. If you close that window or that tab where you have the form open, they will have to start all over. And um, oh, I'm not sure what this question is about. And then what do I enter to tell the form to collect that email address? That was in the settings. And yes. You already addressed that. It, there's lots of different settings here and there, so you have to look for them. 
Right, exactly. Okay. So you have to you have to be very careful about what settings you, and what questions you are asking in your form. If you do not want to, if you want your your audience to be non Gmail users as well. Okay, I think that's got it. Uh, all right. So let me go ahead and and set up my um, our sorry our hands on. And I will walk you through a few through a few examples for your for this hands-on portion. Okay. So on the same handout, yes, on the same handout, um, on page three, I have created I have created um, an example quiz for you, right? So in this next part of the of the webinar, you are going to get down and dirty and create a quiz, okay? Now, if you're lacking some inspiration, you've got some, I provided you some inspiration, all right? So you don't have to think too much about what questions to ask. All right, so the first thing that I have done is, you know, I have opened, I've gone to Google Forms, I've gone to my Google Forms, and I have, I have selected blank quiz. Now, once my blank quiz is open, you know, I will go ahead and make adjustments to my settings. First of all, I'm going to remove the restriction. And since I have to send back scores, I will collect email addresses. Yeah, students would, would tell this to me, like they would tell me all the time, teacher, we don't see your screen. Okay, all right, so I'm at Google Forms. I selected a blank quiz, right? So the first thing that I'm going to do is I opened my blank quiz and now I'm going to um, change my settings. Okay, so once again, sorry about that. I will, I will opt to collect email addresses because I want to be able to email people their scores after I have reviewed their responses. Um, I will remove the restriction. Um, respondents, let's allow them to edit after submit. Um, quizzes, that is already selected. And I am going to select later because I want to be able to, to go back individually and give people feedback. Um, and assign points, okay? Students will be able to see missed questions, correct answers, and point values. All right, I've saved that, and now I can type in a, a title. Let's see, um, webinar one of three, for example, okay? You can, in the form description field, you can add instructions, you can add links, um, but it's gotta be, it has to be text, text only. In the form description, you cannot add media, okay? So here is where you can add, sorry, you can add instructions or a description, okay? Or any links, okay? This is automatically there and it is required because you, I selected um, collect to collect email addresses, okay? Now, now I'm ready to add questions. To add questions, okay. So my first question. Now if you see, I, I've, my window is a little smaller, so my toolbar appears at the bottom instead of on the, on the right side, okay? But it's the same options, okay. So, oh, I'm not ready, sorry. Let's customize a theme. All right, I like this blue. Okay, I've selected a different font, background color, <clears throat> and theme color. You can even add an image if you'd like, if it makes it more personal uh, for your audience. So there you go. Now my form looks a little more customized. Um, okay. 
Got it. So I have provided you with some with some examples, okay? With some examples for uh, for questions. Now I have given you an example question for for most question types, okay? For most question types. So the first example that I give you is for a short answer response. So if we remember, I will go to my drop down menu and I will select short answer, short answer. Now it tells me to insert an image of a celebrity. Okay, so let's see, uh, I don't know, there seems to be a theme. So let's just continue with Michael Jackson, okay. I've gone, I went to Google image, image search and you can also uh, find images in different, in different areas. So I just went to the Google image search. What's really nice about the Google image search is that the results will always be um, for, for public domain use. So you don't have to worry about, you don't have to worry too much about licensing restrictions, okay? So I have selected, I have selected a picture and once you select a picture, a blue bar will appear at the bottom and you can insert the image. And now the image is within your picture. I'm sorry, within your question. So I'm just going to resize that. Okay, I'm going to resize that. Now in my question field, I'll type, who is this? Okay, now, Let's assign an answer key. I will add the correct answer. Oh my goodness, sorry, Michael Jackson. Okay, now in this answer key, um, it's important for you to remember that uh, maybe what are acceptable answers for you, right? So maybe you would also accept MJ, or maybe you would accept if a student or if a user didn't capitalize, right? So you would have to type in any correct answer that you would accept, okay? Um, so these, these are just examples of what, of what a user could respond and it would be marked correct. Okay, and I will mark all other answers as incorrect. Uh, okay, and I will give this poll, this question two points. And click done. Okay, so now if we go to the preview, preview, here you go. when the student or when the uh, when the user is taking is completing the form this is what they will see okay and you can go ahead and close that uh doesn't erase any of your work okay it, you can just go back to your close the tab and it just oh the form is still open um okay so now it tells me i am at on the question toolbar it says to click the plus sign to add question. And that is going to take me to a different question type. And this one is a multiple choice question, okay? I've already selected it, it's multiple choice. Uh, so let's do, let's do the same thing. Now, let me show you the difference between adding an image here and adding an image here, okay? So as you see, in the first question, the image is within the question field, okay? Now, let me add an image here. Let's do a picture of a puppy. Adorable, okay. I've selected it, it's in blue. I go to my blue bar and I select insert. Now, if you see here, my question is still there, but my picture, my image, appears in a separate little box, 
it doesn't have a question field. It only allows an image title. So that's the difference between adding an image from the toolbar and adding an image within the question field, okay? So if I go back to my instructions, it tells me to also insert an image of celebrity. So I will run a Google image search and let's do, I don't know, let's do Michael Jackson again. Oh, Michael Jordan, he came up, okay. Here you go. I've selected my image. It is in now a blue frame and I will select insert. I'm going to resize. I'm resizing the picture by clicking on the blue, on the blue squares, okay? On any of the corners of blue squares. There you go. You can make that as big or as small as you want, okay? So it tells me to type in who is this. And now I'm adding multiple choice, multiple choice answers. So option one, let's say Michael Jordan, um, I don't know, Dennis Rodman, and let's say LeBron James, okay? So what I have to do now is I have to add the answer key, add the answer key. So I will select the correct answer and that is Michael Jordan and I will assign two points, two points to this question and I am done. I am now ready to add the next question. And I, once again, to do that, I will click on the little plus sign, on the plus sign. My next question type is check boxes. Okay, on my form, check boxes. In the question field, I will type, mark all the correct sentences, and let's see if this works, if I copy it all at the same time. Yes, it did. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so now I will add the answer key. She likes walking and she likes to walk. I will add two points. And that's it. Once again, I would repeat the process. Uh, for answering, I'm sorry, for adding a question. Now, I'm going, since I have your attention now, I, before I ask you to, to try this on your own, I'd like to show you um, how to set up a file upload, okay? A file upload question. Now, as I told you, as I told you before, uh, Google will not accept 100% of all types of files that exist on this in this world yeah and so this question type will come with its own settings okay now I want my students to send me a picture of something in their house let's imagine okay so I am going to allow only images okay I don't want any PDFs. I only want them to, to submit images, okay? Now, what I have found in my experience is that the images that Google will accept are J, uh, JPEGs, PNGs, and GIFs, okay? Um, I haven't tried anything else. This I know from what students have tried to submit, okay? Um, I have searched high and low for something official from Google specifying what type of Google, what type of files they accept, but I have not found anything. And so this is something that I have learned by students telling me, teacher, I cannot submit my work. Um, so this is what I have learned. Now I am going to allow them to submit, let's say, 
five pictures, okay? And each file will be 10 megabytes. You can change, you can change the file size that you allow. Now, if you look here, it gives you a little notice that this form can accept up to one gigabyte of files. So that means that if you have 20 students submitting five pictures each, you know, your what happens if you're, you know, if you reach that one gigabyte of files turned in, what that does is your form stops accepting responses, okay? And that's very easy to fix. All you have to do is just change, change this. If you see the maximum, maximum size of all files uploaded, I'm going to change that to 10 gigabytes, okay? Now the one kind of annoying thing about Google Forms is that it will keep sending you a reminder. It will keep sending you a reminder. Every time that somebody submits work, it will send you a reminder. Capacity is almost at max. Capacity is almost uh, reached. And while that isn't true, it just keeps sending you a reminder. And so it's a little, it's a little annoying, okay? But I, I haven't found a way to turn that notification off. Um, okay, uh, at this point, I can answer more questions for you or you are free to, to give this a try and create your own, create your own blank quiz and I am here to answer questions or walk you through another example. Does that sound like a good idea, Melinda and Anthony? All right, so then let me, let me go ahead and, and demonstrate uh, another question type, um, which is adding, I'm sorry, it's not a question type, it's just adding video, adding video to your, to your question. So I am currently on number five, okay? I'm currently on number five, and I'm going, the question type that I would like to use is a drop-down question, okay? Now, I'm, at, I'm going to add a video to this question. This, um, <clears throat> again, you can add a video and have a different question type, okay? It's not, adding a video is not limited to the type of question that you select. Now, Unlike the previous questions where I've added an image and the image appears within the question, adding a video will not let you do that, okay? So what you need to do here is, uh, in my toolbar, I will add a video, okay? I will select add video, and I already have the URL selected, so I'm just going to type it in and search for it, okay? Uh, this is indeed the video that I, that I want, okay? This is the video that I want. So I will click it uh, and then I will press the blue button to select. And this will automatically add the video to, to my form. Now, it says untitled video. You are free to add a title to this video, to add instructions, so, for example, I will say, watch video and answer the following question. Okay. Now, here, I have the option to add a question, right? Now, I already, I had already added it, so I'm just going to drag it, drag it down, if I can. Okay. My form is not, I just don't have enough space on my window. There you go. No, just kidding. Okay, well, it's not cooperating with me, so I'll just add another question and delete this one. Okay, so here you go. Once again, this is a drop down question. It's a drop down question. And my question is going to be the only black kid in the class is considered. 
Okay, and I will add my options. And what I'm doing is I'm just copying and pasting and it's very convenient that it, cre it creates one, it creates them as different options instead of one whole copy and paste. So that saved me, that saved me a minute, right? So now I will add the answer key and assign points. Got it. And again, if you're curious, about the aesthetics or how clear this form is for your audience. Go back, preview. There you go. Right, and this is, you would watch the video and answer the question that is there. Once again, if you close this tab, uh, nothing will change on your form. There you go. Okay. All right, how are we doing? Hi, Monica. So yeah, what if we could break for a second, let's see if we can get to some of these questions here. Okay. So um, there is a question from Jacqueline that just came up about the video about adding a video. Okay. So the question is, um, I added the video, but it came up in a separate box. Right. So I couldn't add the questions. Exactly. How do I add the video to the question box? So what I what I said is that with videos, it unfortunately does not allow us to do that. So with a video, your video will appear in in a separate box. And so what I what I do to guide users to the question is in the in the title field, I type watch the video and answer the following question, right? And so then I have to add, you have to, you would have to add a question and that is where you would type your question or questions that are related to the video. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, let's get, there's some questions about um, the scoring. So let's see if we can answer some of those questions. Um, First of all, um, Elizabeth was wondering um, either today or maybe in another webinar, if you're gonna cover getting the scores into Google Classroom. Uh, so in the third webinar, we're gonna talk about results, analyzing the results. And yes, I, I believe that I can't, you know, I'm not as proficient in Google Classroom, but I can definitely uh, do my homework and have something for you for the third webinar on that. Fantastic. Okay. Um, okay. So, oh, okay. So if you have a question where there are two possible correct answers, okay, and the student or the user only marks one of the answers that, uh, you know, instead of both, how well, how does the student get points for that? Do they only get like do they get one point if if the if you marked two total points for the question, do they only get one point? Do they get both points? Do they get zero points? So how does that work? So unfortunately, no, your answer key uh, will require you know if you mark uh, if you mark two answers as correct, the students will have to mark those two answers. Now, what you could do um, is you could go back and review and review responses. Okay, you could review responses and you can see, okay, you know what, the student got one out of two possible, one out of the two possible answers. So I'm going to give them one point, you know, and that's the way that you could uh, let me find a, a form where I can where I can show this. Let's see if I have one. If you give me one moment. Okay, so here you go, right? So this is one of the responses that, that I got from your from your quiz, right? Uh, so for example, this person, right? This person happened to mark both they marked both correct answers. But let's imagine that a, one person, they only marked one, right? 
So if you go to the if you go to the points section, uh, here you go. Here is where you can add more points or reduce their points. Okay. Does that answer your question? And that's the way that you can change the point value to to a student's response. So you could give them credit. It would just involve you going back to each response and looking uh, looking through through the student's response. So in my personal opinion, I would try to avoid these types of questions. Um, maybe instead of uh, asking it as one question, maybe you can divide it and ask two questions, if that makes sense. So it's just easier, easier on you and you don't have to go back and double check and assign points for, for half correct answers. Um, and Monica, while we're there, um, somebody was asking in that add individual feedback um, option, what do we put there typically? So here is where you could, if you give me one moment, okay. In this add individual feedback, you can you can type in, you know, you can add a add a link, uh, or you could say something like, "Great work," right? Or you could let's say let's let's add a link, and I can say, let, "Let's just imagine I added a a link to to a video to some kind of instructional video." right and i can say uh watch this video to um i don't know to understand the concept better right and so let's just type in something in here very quickly uh, So I would add it and um, save. And now when I send the student their score, they will see my individual feedback and they will see my little message. And the student can click on that link and watch the video or see a picture that, that I have asked them to re for review, for example. That's a pretty useful feature. Um, I, one way that I have used this is um, my, for example, I record a tutorial, yes, um, or maybe me going over, going over the answers to, to homework and I record that and I add the video, I add the feed, I add it as feedback for, for the form. So now every time this, when students receive their scores, everyone will see everyone will see that that feedback um, and let me show you how, how to do that okay so for example i will click on a question and i will add answer key and add answer feedback so now when i type when i type feedback in the google form right so here I am in the, if you notice, I'm in the questions, not responses. So any feedback that I add here will be visible to all, to all uh, recipients um, of this form after they submit their form, okay? So something that I'll type, for example, is, I don't know, this looks great. I will send you your score in three days, okay? And I can save that. And now all students will be able to see that feedback after they submit, ah, oh, sorry, when they receive their score. So those are two different ways that you can add feedback. One way, if I add feedback in the questions, right? all students, oh, sorry, everyone will be able to see that feedback. And when I, when you are reviewing responses, 
when you are, sorry, when you are reviewing responses and you add individual feedback, that feedback will only go to, to that person. So I think everyone was able to see the link to this, to this video, correct? So that's what I did. I added the feedback in the questions so that everybody could see, could see it once they submitted their response. All right, I hope that answers, that was a long response. I hope that answered your question. Yeah, thank you, Monica. And then um, we do have one more question in the Q&A. Um, so the question is about inserting math symbols mm -hmm. into, mm -hmm. either, into either your question or your uh, answers. Do you have any recommendations about math symbols that so, can be added? You know what, uh, hang on one second. Let me. What did I do? Okay. So regarding the math symbols, I'm, for example, two plus two. When you, Google will automatically um, kind of like identify the type of question that you're trying to ask. So if they see some kind of mathematical symbol, sometimes it will, um, I'm not getting it now, I'm sorry. It will like, default to the type of response that you can get. Now, as for math symbols, I, I don't know how you can add them direct, uh, you know, if you have a keyboard shortcut for your symbols, um, but there is no way on Google Forms, on Google Forms per se, where it will give you the symbol, the options for mathematical symbols. Um, however, I am sure that there is some kind of add-on for Google Forms that you can find on the G Suite that would help you with that. You know, if you find an add-on um, and you can apply it to Google Forms, um, and I can show you how I can show you how to how to look for add-ons right now. Um, so Monica. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So we um, a couple of recommendations coming in the chat. Melinda said actually you can add them as a picture or a drawing. Oh, okay. Um, and then. Um, Elizabeth recommended if you put spaces in between the math question, so two space times space two, rather than all together. Okay, there you go. It will like default the value, right? Yeah, you there might. You go. I wonder if you also need to change. Oh, there you go. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. well, that's going to bring up that response validation. Yes. Yes. Um, so that, I mean, that's helpful, but unfortunately, so Melinda says that we can add it as a drawing. Or a picture, yeah. Or a picture. Okay, got it. Now, I would, you know, I would go for the less, try to work um, as easiest as I could, and I would go to the G Suite first and see if there's a, some kind of add-on on Google Forms for that. Um, and let me show you how you can do that, okay? Now, if you go, if you go to your, uh, you know, your Google Apps, at the bottom, you can go to more from G Suite Marketplace, okay? And you can type here, you can look for something related to Google Forms. So these are all the mini programs that you can add to Google Forms to help you do different things with Google Forms. Um, okay, I don't see anything. Icons, icons for slides and, and docs. Hmm. Okay. All right, so as you can see, there are lots and lots and lots of, of add-ons that you could add 
to your to your Google form. If there is nothing here that is worth your time, I would recommend that you write to Google and that you, I'm sure you're not the only one with, with this request. And you know, they are receptive. They may not do it then and there, but they might consider it for a future release, for a future version of Google Forms. Monica has covered a lot today. <laughs> so <Yep. laughs> Monica, can you give us a little preview of, um, or do you know right now um, what you're planning for two and three for the next two I webinars? sure do. Okay, so why don't, just, cover that, why don't we cover that first? Let me just get to that. Okay, got it. So I hope that you, know, you have found today about, you know, valuable and that you offer me, you know, constructive feedback. I have two more uh, webinars to, to give. So I would love for you to be here and join me and get the most out of your time. So looking, looking ahead, you know, part two on July next Thursday, um, we're going to talk about sharing the Google form. Okay. So I hope that between this time and next time, uh, you know, if you create a Google form or a, a quiz that we're going to eat so that you could practice sharing it. Now, if you don't, that's fine. You don't have to. You could use one of mine, okay, that I will, I will share with you. Um, now, what you're going to do is we're going to learn to share it different ways, okay? So I'm going to show you how to hyperlink, how to hyperlink text uh, to your Google form, okay? So for those of us who are, who are, for example, managing a website, right? Um, how to create a hyperlink so you don't, you don't have to, students don't see that long URL, you know, that long link that you saw in the chat box, right? So just how to clean it up and make it look a little nicer. Um, so I'll show you how to create a hyperlink and Secondly, I'll show you how to use a URL shortener. Specifically, I'm going to be talking about bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y. All right, that's the one I'm going to be focusing on, and most of them work in similar ways, okay? So that's what I will use next week. And third, I will show you how to embed, embed a form into your Google Sites. So, um, you know, if you've ever been on a website and the website already has the form as part of the page, you don't have to click on a link to go to a form. Uh, that is what embedding is, okay? So I will talk about those three things next week and I guess anything else that might come up from the audience. And in part three of three, we will talk about viewing and analyzing your results.